Morning ladies and gents, just a quick update. Uh, this is the, the wood dryer here. This is where I store all my wood. Um, Bob, that's Jezza, bug out bushcraft. These are your uh, scales. I don't know how well the camera's picking them up. I'm using my daughter's camera, it's a Panasonic. It's a brilliant camera. I'd have to get one of these. My old camera's broke, unfortunately. So Bob, those are going to be yours. Uh, and um, show down here, nicely drying out, are your U scales. And they're going to come out quite nice, I think. Also, your sheath is here. This is the multi carry sheath that you want for your knife. Uh, John built it, John Wellings. Beautiful job. Um, as we come to expect from him with a quick release uh, little loop there and uh, Gaston, Gaston is from Chile uh, I stabilised the wood for your knife and that is there that's ready to be used now so I'll be building that this week Gaston asks me how do you seal the wood so uh, I'll show you that now. Oh, Here's a jar of linseed oil, and you can thin it down. That's a good idea to thin it down a little bit with a little bit of white spirit. You don't need too much, uh, and then place your your knife your knife handles in the uh, the linseed oil. In this case, I'm going to be using these doing these fire steels. <coughs> Same process for the knives. They go into the oil, and um, and you can leave them <coughs> in the oil for a period of time, say eight hours. Uh, and that, and the wood will absorb the oil into the grain. But, <clears throat> but I am the pilgrim master. I will always go one step further. So I put my um, knife handles, fire steels, etc., into this old sweet jar, and then. I apply a vacuum. So now the air is now being sucked out. If you can't quite see it. It's rather a dirty jar now. You might just be able to see some froth start to form on top of that jar. As the vacuum takes hold, I can see it just beginning to happen and what that does that removes the air from the wood now you can just see it turning now that removes the air from the wood and then when you um, restore normal atmospheric pressure there's a negative pressure in the wood and the wood then sucks the oil in much better now look at that you can see it now that's the air coming out of the fire steel handles. And some of you are probably wondering at this vacuum here, it's quite a strong vacuum, and there's an awful lot of atmospheric pressure working on that jar now. It's quite dangerous. Well, it is. But um, he who dares wins. There you go, you can see that now that the jar's cleared. And all the air has been sucked out of the wood. Right, and now uh, we moved the vacuum as you can tell, and my fire steels are in there now. And I'll just leave them in there for two or three hours and let them um, draw some of the oil into the wood. And then over time, what happens, that oil will harden and prevent the ingress of moisture, thus stabilising the wood. That's the theory anyway. My friend Tom, Tom Adair, from Australia says, uh, can we see them all together, see what they look like? Uh, so, that's the, the, the classic, Woodlaw type clone. This is my new Scout, which I really like, really like this. Update on that coming in a minute. This is the Mini, slightly modified it, 
by adding a little choil there or guard there as they call it and this is the Skinner um, this was the first prototype but on future Skinners they're going to have more of an arch very very slight arch there um, so I'm not building many of these yet there's, I, I'm waiting for a new machine to arrive because this is a hollow grind and I need a good wheel to do it on and the wheel that I'm using uh, isn't truly flat wheel um, when I get the new machine it'll have a truly flat wheel and I'll be able to uh, to get a bit of hollow grind so I'm holding off on building those at the moment so there they are Tom I hope you like that they're all together look. my range of knives so far here's uh, three of my latest knife builds completed well you saw me do the fire steels uh, they're in the oil at the moment uh, this one's Colin's knife with um, beautiful um, witch elm scales, plain pins beautiful knife this is DH's knife, just needs a clean up uh, some sort of rosewood scales on that I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, the wood is he did tell me nice and clean red liners on both of these knives and Jay uh, this is yours put a very distinct taper on this, pop a good taper on it yeah nice and thin on the pommel as you can see Good flat, well fitted, tapered tang on that one. Got to finish your sheaf off though. This sheaf's one of my sheaves, just needs the finish applied to it. And these here are John's, that's John Wellings. Spent some of yesterday working out on some, working some, on some designs for the Mini. I'm really, really, really pleased with the way the Mini's turned out. And uh, sorry, not the Mini, the uh, the Scout rather, the Scout. Uh, so uh, Gary Forever English, if you're watching this, uh, this one, this bit's more for you, or anyone that's interested in in a Scout at some future date. Um, this was the first knife that I built, the first Scout that I built, and I stood at the grinder, uh, having put the the wood on and I was unsure exactly how to shape the handle I spoke to Foggy and he said you really want some sort of contouring going on so I contoured the handle uh, it's, it's oak, red liners, plain pins and it feels it's a bit on the thin side um, but having said that it feels fine, absolutely fine um, whether it be too big still for a 10 year old I don't know but 10 year olds have a habit of growing quickly but Gary if you're interested in that knife you'd be welcome to it got a finger placement area there I showed it to Foggy and he said you know it looks like an Enzo Trapper and that, I, I didn't intend to copy any knife at all um, but I think the, th the fact is that with knife making so many knives have already been built that designs have been have been invented and done that whatever you do it's never going to be unique uh, this the sheaf's unfinished um, I wanted this a bit of a slightly different sheaf so put a little D-ring on I'm probably going to make a little belt dangler for that uh, so that's that's one knife, it's slightly smaller, I was experimenting with these these scouts uh, that's the smallest scout that I've got and I did actually make them slightly longer, only about 5mm longer and, and that's what the scout is like now, that's that's how they are going to be from now on uh, so here's a here's the, 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 the full size scout if you like and you can just see 
the first one I've I done is a very 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 slightly smaller not much just a little bit also I thickened out the handle and this really is a beautiful knife I'm keeping this one for myself beautiful knife uh, I know it's right I just know in my in my bones I feel it in my bones that it's right um, I wanted to design a good sheath for it and so I've come up with that as the sheath uh, again with a dangle, I need to finish these sheaves off they've all been waterproofed on the inside with Vaseline incidentally this is a left hand sheath um, this, the, the knife is staying with me but this sheath is going to uh, a reviewer that lives in Cornwall you know who I mean so I wonder what you think to the sheath designs anyway that's it time to go and do some grinding thanks for watching I will be posting a few updates over the forthcoming days especially for Bob because he's requested some videos done of his knife being made but it does eat into the time Bob I'll do what I can for you thanks for watching and remember <laughs> oh yes remember If you do it this way, it's going to be easy to clean the mess up. Thanks for the wine. My lips are sealed. <laughs>